Enter stage left. This is Dr. Thomas Klein coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina and bringing you information gathered by the National Pain Council. And by the way, go to their website and you just type in pain, uh, National Pain Council and you'll come to the website. And I noticed the other day when I went on Google, there's a list of the subsections right there on Google. So you can hit publications and you can see all our publications, then you can just download them for nothing. We don't copyright anything. You can steal it, you can plagiarize it, we don't care. You can, wait a minute, I forgot to start my timer. You see, I'm not a very good producer. <laughs> anyway, so today I promised we're gonna talk about cytokines. So let me write that down on the list. because at the end of the day I get that little card out of the but it doesn't tell me what it is so I need to keep a list. Anyway, we're going to start with a little parable called the toe and the cytokine. We actually have written this up and if you send uh, a request National Pain Council um, at gmail.com we'll send you a copy as soon as we have it done. We're very close to having it done. just needs to be edited and if any of you are editors out there, by the way, use the same email address and let us know. That's what's kind of holding us up because I, uh, me and the other researchers write these things up, but you know, we're all kind of illiterate and we need good editors that have actually passed English in high school, which I did not. So we're going to use the parable, the toe and the cytokine. The, let's say that uh, Maxwell is gone down to Ocean City and is on the big wooden boardwalk eating the famous french fries there in Ocean City and walking along and she gets a splinter in her toe and it kind of hurts a little bit but she continues on with her friends and they're having a good time at the beach. The next day her toe is now red and swollen and it kind of hurts a little more than it did on the first day so what happened? Her immune system is kicking in. Very important to understand your immune system is what keeps you safe. Your immune system makes antibodies to viruses, antibodies to bacteria. Uh, it has lots of, of different ways of doing things. There are T cells, they're called, and there's macrophages, lots, lots of, your immune system is huge and complex. So in Maxwell's case, the splinter triggered little macrophages, they're called, they're like little amoeba, and they escape from the capillary, and they go around literally vacuuming up bacteria and debris. But they also do something else. They release messenger chemicals that message the entire body that, wait a minute, you got a problem down here in your toe, all hands on board. And what they send out are these chemicals called cytokines. C-Y-T-O-K-I-N-E-S, if you want to look it up. Cytokines. So now Maxwell has circulating cytokines. And they're going to help bring more macrophages and more um, helpers and, and T cells and things like that. So they're ganging up on this splinter. Three days later, her toe is really painful. It's huge and swollen and red. She calls her doctor. Her doctor prescribes antibiotics. And then it lingers. So on the fourth day, which it should be improving, it doesn't improve. Fifth day. Now it's getting to the point she can't drive her car because that's the foot she uses on her accelerator. So she's trying to move her left foot over to the accelerator, which is dangerous. So what's happened in her body? Well, it turns out the cytokines are in two big groups. One, pro-inflammatory cytokines stimulate the inflammation. That's why her toe is red and swollen. The second group are called anti-inflammatory cytokines. So everything in your body goes in cycles. It's called a servo mechanism. In other words, the pro-inflammatory cytokines come in, they swell up your toe, and then they're happy that all the, everything is mopped up 
and then they signal the anti-inflammatory cytokines to come in and decrease the inflammation, pro-inflammatory cyto pro cytokines back off. So normally this would be on the third, fourth, and fifth day when the toe would gradually get better. But Maxwell's toe doesn't get better. So what's happened? For some reason, the anti-inflammatory cytokines did not arrive. And the pro-inflammatory cytokines getting all the wrong messages and think that there's still this massive problem in the toe that needs all this swelling and redness and pain. So what is it that does not turn off the inflammation? We don't know. This is what happens with chronic painful disease. It gets triggered and then it doesn't shut off. This could be after surgery. This is the reason for failed back surgery, um, triggering other problems like adhesive arachnoiditis. So in other words, your arachnoid covering like saran wrap around your, hip, around your brain and spinal cord becomes inflamed, doesn't shut down. Now you got a real problem. So a month later, Maxwell's toe is not only huge, now she's getting symptoms elsewhere. She gets pain in her shoulder. She gets pain where you would not expect it to occur. And the next thing that happens, like at a month later, is suddenly she develops symptoms of inflammation of her brain. This is called neuroinflammation or central sensitization. Somehow, those cytokines, those pro-inflammatory cytokines, have made their way into the brain past the blood-brain barrier that normally keeps out large proteins like that. Something happens to the blood-brain barrier. We're not sure, but it becomes, uh, it leaks. So now, you got pro-inflammatory cytokines that started out at the toe and then started circulating. Now they're in your brain. So guess what that is. That is fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia is really central pain syndrome. We're not going to use the word fibromyalgia much anymore since people like PROP and CDC try to say that you should pass laws not to treat it with opiates. It's very real and it is an extension of the original inflammatory process. So if you were in a car wreck and you had lots of damaged tissue and your pro-inflammatory cytokines came in to clean up things, but they kept on coming and the anti-inflammatory cytokines did not arrive. How do I know this? You can draw blood and measure the cytokines. There's a whole bunch of them and we all know what they are. IL, IL-6, IL-10, uh, TNF factor, a lot of funny names, but there's a whole bunch of them. And as I mentioned before, this is what the drug companies target for these biologics expensive dangerous drugs to use in rheumatoid arthritis. They pick one and they make an antibody to it. So now we have the brain involved. How do we know that? About two years ago at the Massachusetts General Hospital, a famous place in our country, they discovered along with the Swedes at their famous hospital that if you do a PET scan, which is a special kind of MRI, you can see the inflammation in the brain. The little cells in the brain are called uh, microglia. They're kind of like that original macrophage that slipped out of the capillary and started the toe problem. So lo and behold, the brain is inflamed, really inflamed. And what we're discovering at the National Pain Council through talking to people and um, asking about their symptoms, is there are four symptoms of central pain syndrome. Allodynia, sensitive skin, can't take a shower. Uh, a lot of people ref prefer to go around the home without any clothes because it's so uncomfortable. Bed sheets, 
being touched by other people. How awful is that? That's the number one symptom of central uh, pain syndrome or neuroinflammation. And by the way, there, there is um, some diagnostic codes for that. There's no diagnostic code for fibromyalgia. Second, extreme fatigue to the point that you're dragging yourself around. You can't get off the couch to make yourself a sandwich. Fatigue, allodynia. Next is brain fog. It seems like your brain just drops out of gear and it doesn't want to work. And the last one is increased pain, hyperalgesia, which the wackos uh, who are pushing for no opioids uh, the rest of the uh, um, uh, time in America, that's just increased pain. Hyperalgesia is pain. What is analgesia? You put an in the front of something, it means none. So an analgesic cuts down on pain. That's what opiates are. They're pain analgesics. All right, so now we've got the brain inflamed along with whatever the original toe or surgery or car wreck was. There's usually always something in the history of people with chronic pain. Now we don't like the word chronic pain. It doesn't even have a diagnosis code. So we are using for all of these, including autoimmune diseases, any disease that's painful for a long period of time and has no cure, systemic inflammatory disease. There's even an ICD-10 code for that, which is like R367, I forget it, we can look it up. So there's a code for this. So when you go to the doctor, the doctor can look up a code for your inflammatory disease and bill for it. You can't bill for chronic pain syndrome. There isn't a diagnostic code and it's inappropriate anyway. This is, to excuse me, total body inflammation. So we're going to talk about treatment at some point maybe next, but for now, understanding the mechanism of the disease explains a lot. Oh, one more thing. The hypothalamus, which is part of your brain, becomes inflamed along with the rest of your brain. The hypothalamus is in charge of your sympathetic nervous system. This is POTS, unstable blood pressure, pulses racing up and down, sweating like in the middle of the night, these are symptoms of the sympathetic nervous system being inflamed in your brain. So you see this general cytokine inflammation, which is really a hyperimmune state. You're